Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I am going to be doing a review of Seeds of War by Joao Silva. This is the first book in the Smokesmiths trilogy and it is also a self-published fantasy series that I've heard quite a lot about. Joao is also an author whose journey I've been following for quite a while. I remember when he actually announced the first book and he reached out to me to ask me if I was interested in reading an arc of the book. Um, but you know life gets in the way and he was very understanding about that so I've always had a soft spot for him and it's been great to see him release his second book which I believe came out a couple of weeks ago and I've been hearing really great things about that one so naturally I've always kind of kept this book in the back of my mind and I thought finally I would actually pick it up now that the second book is out and I could potentially pick that up this year if I enjoyed the first one Long story short, I did really enjoy it. I think it's the start of a really interesting fantasy series that I really cannot wait to see develop. It is very much an epic grimdark fantasy series and I don't know if it's necessarily positioned as grimdark but I do think it has grimdark elements in it, specifically the morally grey characters and the fact that the world is quite gritty. It doesn't really shy back and I think with that context, let's do a little bit of a summary of what this book is about. We are essentially following three main pr perspectives. All three of our main POVs have a different mission and the assumption that we make as the reader is, is that those missions will eventually collide by the end of the first book and that's exactly what happens. I'm not actually going to say much about what each individual POV's mission is. I will reference it a little bit later on when I go into characters but I do actually really like going into books not knowing much about them. The only thing I knew about this book going into it was the magic system because the magic system is very intriguing to me and I'll talk more about that later on. But just go into this book expecting a very character driven story. Go into this book expecting a rich world and a really compelling story that's really starting to take shape at the end of the first book. So with that in mind, let's jump into what I really liked about this book. And there were many things that I really liked about this book. The first thing is, is that this is a really well-written book. And this doesn't read like a debut fantasy book. And I think that's a testament to Joao's writing. You couldn't tell that it was a debut. It does what it needs to do. It has a very kind of witty tone to it that I really enjoy and particularly see in grimdark fantasy. I think a really good example of that is Joe Abercrombie. Another really good example of that is KJ Parker. They both have a really witty undertone to their writing and I think Joao has this in his writing too. It's quite cutting and I enjoy each of the characters individual tone as well and how that fits in with the overall tone of the story. It works, it does the job and it doesn't detract if anything it adds to the overall story. One of the many things that I really enjoy about this book is the fact that the author really spends the time to build up the world and the individual characters. This is not a book that starts off with a bang. Uh, I mean it starts off pretty slowly. We really get a sense of each of these people, where they are, what they're doing and kind of where potentially their journey may end up by the end of this first book and maybe even by the end of this series. Again, another really good example of that is Joe Abercrombie. Yeah, everybody complains about the first book being incredibly slow and it not having much plot. I wouldn't say this book is completely devoid of plot, but I wouldn't say it's the most plot driven book. And for somebody like me, that's absolutely fine because we really get a sense of what this world is about. We really get a sense of these characters and I really can't wait to see how that develops in the coming books. This may be an issue for some people if you don't like slow starts and you need to kind of be having action every single moment. That's not this book. But I have a feeling that that is just going to pick up in the subsequent books now that the stage is set. The world building is rich, it's dark and it's very unforgiving. This is one of my favourite kind of settings of any world. I like a gritty world. I like my fantasy to feel somewhat realistic, which I fully am aware that for a lot of people they don't like that. And that's why they don't like Grimdark. But it's the antithesis for me. I, I like being in a world that feels quite real and sometimes maybe a bit too real and I do think we get an element of that in this book. We get a good sense of the world, the animals, the transportation systems, the terrain, like I, I, one of the things that I really noted about this book is the fact that events happen across multiple different terrains and I just really enjoyed it and it felt quite cinematic. I feel like we're barely scratching the surface here though and I'm really excited to see how the world opens up. And let's move on to characters. As everybody knows, if you've been watching my channel even for a small while, characters are my favourite thing. And as I mentioned at the start of this review, characters are very much the driving force of this story. It is very much a character-driven story, which is my 
favorite thing. We have three main POVs. They are all morally gray. They are all incredibly flawed. And they're all characters that one minute you're rooting for them and the next minute you're wondering whether you should be rooting for them. And yet you probably still do anyway. The really interesting thing about each of these people is that they're all playing protector roles. They're all playing roles where they're essentially having to protect you know either their family or other people and i really like that that's the thing that unites them all even though they're not necessarily all on the same side they're all united by the fact that they are protecting something or someone and i think that's a very common theme throughout this book i'll talk more about themes later on but let's deep dive into each of the characters i'm not going to tell you too much about each one because again i think that's something that you should experience when you read the book but I'll give a little bit of a spiel. So the first one that we follow is Gimlaw. Gimlaw is the type of female character that I really enjoy in my books. She's a mother, she's a war veteran, she's older, she's incredibly intelligent, but she's also not always on the ball. She has flaws and sometimes she's vulnerable. And she's a very complex character because of that. And that's what I really like about her character. She wants to protect those that she cares about, her family, her village. And she also wants to be in a position where she can provide for them too. So it's not just about protecting, it's also providing for them. And those two things are sometimes at odds with each other and she has to make hard decisions. She's a very, very well realised character. The funny thing is, it's very rare that I enjoy all character POVs in a book equally. And I have to say, I really did enjoy all of these characters pretty much equally. One moment I would think Gimlaw was my favourite character, then it would be another character, then it would be the third character. So they kind of swap throughout the book and by the end of it, they're all kind of on a level playing field here. The thing about Gimlaw is, is that she's a character that I've been craving more and more in fantasy. And I just think she's very complex. She's quite vulnerable, but she's also incredibly strong. She has all these dichotomies in her character and that's what makes her interesting. She's very, very well written and I'm really excited to see where her direction goes because there's some really interesting things in the plot that relate to her that I'm not going to mention that I think are going to elevate her character even more in the next books. The next character is a really, really great character. This was my favourite character at the start of the book. And it's just such a great concept for a character. The name is Orberesus. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but I'm just going to go with that. And Orberesus is essentially a thief pretending to be a god. His kind of mission in this book is that he wants to find a cure for his migraines. Now, he got the migraines after an event happened that I'm not going to talk about, but he's been starting to get really bad migraines. Now, if anybody has ever had a migraine, you know they're pretty terrible, right? I've had migraines before in the past. They are not to be laughed at, that's for sure. And his whole kind of mission is to basically find something that will help him with his migraines. And the thing I love about this character is, is that he's essentially just a con man playing a really elaborate con. And, but when I say elaborate, it's actually not that elaborate. And it's quite funny that he's able to fool people so easily. And I think his character kind of brings into the question the role of religion and how people want and sometimes need something to believe in, even if that thing isn't necessarily what would one expect from like a religious figure, if that makes sense. Being in his head was so funny and I thought his character really brought the light relief. He reminds me a lot of Glockter. He's just got this internal monologue that is incredibly witty and very cutting. And I love it. I love that sort of character. I love the sarcastic, witty humour it's my humour. So when I read it, I really enjoy it. And I can't wait to see where his character goes as well. Like, it's just going to be a wild ride, I think. The funniest thing about him is, is that he is a con man and he fully kind of takes on this role as a god. And it's just really funny to watch, to be honest. Like, it's it's so good. The final POV that we follow is a character type that I really enjoy. I've talked about this many times on my channel. And that is Red Now. Red Now is a war veteran who's kind of past his prime. He's a legend. Everybody knows his name. Everybody fears his name. But he's tired. He's really tired. He's broken. And he wants to retire. And the thing I love about this character type is the kind of rough, tough war vet kind of done with that life and now they want to move on to living a quiet and peaceful life and I, I just really enjoy that character type for some reason it's one of my favorite character types and I think Joao did a really good job of writing Red now uh, so that he didn't come across as like a cliche like I think it's like a fresh take on that character type again I really liked being in his head and I'm again I'm really interested to see where his character goes because by the end of the book he's not necessarily going to be getting the life that he wants 
and that's really unfortunate but at the same time he's one of those people that has always been destined for greatness and while he has to some extent achieved that maybe the greatest part of his life hasn't happened yet we don't know i don't know yet so i'm really excited to see how that plays out all three of these characters are super compelling in their own ways they all work together, even though they're not necessarily in the same parts of the world throughout the entire book. There's also a really great cast of secondary characters. I am always really cognizant of this when you have kind of multi-POV books, whether the secondary cast of characters really get due attention. And I think they do. I'm really excited to see how that expands. And uh, there's also a few characters that I'm really hoping we get to see develop as well that are beyond this initial trio. So now let's move on to the magic system. Oh my gosh, this magic system is so cool. It's a smoke-based magic system and the people and the people who wield this magic are called smokesmiths, hence the name of the series, the Smokesmiths trilogy. And these people were essentially exposed to magic when they were babies and the babies who survived that essentially become the smokesmiths. The interesting thing about this magic system is that as the wielder uses the magic it slowly kills them so the more they use it the more likely they are to be killing themselves quicker. There are also rumours of what is essentially like a potion, I can't think of a better word for it, that can also cause those without magic to get this magic and th that's kind of one of the key aspects of this plot is where is this potion who has it and like how can the various different camps get a hold of it because whoever can wield that can create incredibly powerful armies it doesn't require them to be dependent on smokesmiths anymore because anybody can ingest it and gain that power temporarily so the magic system is very unique i've not really come across a smoke driven fantasy magic system before i think it's such a cool concept i really like that this is a magic system that is quite new I've just never heard of it it's quite novel and uh I just really love it yeah I really really like the concept of it and I really like how the magic actually kind of realizes itself because some of the characters can turn into these like really cool beasts and stuff but anyway I'm not going to go too deep into it because you should enjoy it for yourself but it's a very rich magic system and I'm really 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 curious to see how it expands. I have a feeling that we're going to get deeper into it and I really hope we do. Now let's talk about themes. Now one of the really interesting themes about this book and I, I think this isn't necessarily new to fantasy by any means but we do have very much a kind of hierarchical society. The smokesmiths are the elite in society because naturally they are the magic wielders, but that power is manipulated by the rulers. And whether they actually have any real say is a question mark. Because I do love a good fantasy series about hierarchy, about power imbalances. It's just something that, you know, has been in the fantasy genre for many, many years, for many decades, for many centuries, I'm sure. And uh, I think it will continue to be so. I also really like the exploration around religion in this book. As I mentioned, one of our main POVs is a person pretending to be a god. And I, as I mentioned before, I think there's a really interesting thread around like belief and people sometimes needing to believe in something in order to be able to live their lives. And I think that's such an interesting concept. And again, I really just hope we get more exploration around that as the series progresses. I think there's one more other theme that I quite liked that was kind of touched upon in one particular character's POV. And that's the whole idea around what do you do when you've led an incredibly rich life? Like what happens beyond that point? Like, do you keep doing that until you die? Or do you take the time to kind of rest and recover and live out your days in a way that is you know potentially the antithesis of that rich life you once led that doesn't obviously take away the fact that you've led a rich life does it it just means that maybe you want a slightly different change of pace so i really like the exploration around that i think there's quite a few different things here that are kind of at play that i'm really excited to see how they expand i think it was just kind of barely scraped in this book naturally because it's the first book in the series and yeah i'm, I'm really excited in terms of my issues with this book there weren't a ton i think there were just a few minor ones and you know, I don't think they particularly detracted from the overall reading experience. I think overall the pacing was really strong, as I mentioned at the start of the video, but I do think sometimes certain events happened a little bit too quickly. Certain decisions were made a little bit too quickly by the characters, and I think a bit more time with those decisions or with those events could have made them even more impactful. My only other gripe was that I do think it was a little bit repetitive in places. So as an example, with one of the POVs, he does repeat kind of 
what's happening with him quite a few times and like I said it didn't detract from the overall reading experience but I just think if those bits had been cut out it would have made the story even more sharper. So those were only really my two main issues and uh, I just I think this is one of those series that as it progresses it's just going to get richer and better and we're going to get a more expansive world. I'm just so excited to see where it ends up going by the end of the series because I honestly have no clue at this point point. and this is how I felt with you know Abercrombie's series, this is how I felt with a lot of KJ Parker's books and I like to be surprised and I hope Joao does surprise us and have a feeling that he will. I think this is a really really solid start, I just think that the world is going to expand and build even more on top of what we've got in this foundational book and I think the author did an incredible job of setting that up and creating a really good sense of what this world is like and what the characters are doing and what the world looks like. So that's it. This was a really good book. I think a lot of you who watch my channel, you know, you like darker stuff, you like stuff that tend to be quite character driven, you like stuff where um, it's written well and, you know, there's a fresh take on something that's already been done many times before. I think you'll really enjoy this book. I think it's a really great start to what could be a really incredible series. I will put links down below and to Joao as well really really lovely guy and I've heard the writing also improves in the next book which is always a good sign because that means that the author is taking their craft very seriously. Take note Sarah J Mass. Let me know if you have read this book, let me know if you haven't and you're considering it and let's take the conversation down in the comments below. Thanks for watching folks, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did please do give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Take care, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.